Hi, my name is Joseph Leibovich. I'm a senior software engineer here at Meta. Today I'll be showing you a quick tutorial based on a project I built called Magic Spheres. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to create a custom interaction script that you could use to enable grab and release functionality in your app. Let's take a look at what we'll build today. So this is the Magic Spheres project. As you see, we have three spheres here. We got a fire sphere, a vortex sphere, and an ice sphere. Our hands are tracked as we put them through the spheres. If we grab, we'll clone a sphere. When we let release, it will send it forward into space. They'll explode. And we can grab multiple spheres, let them go, they'll explode. And yeah, so let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so here we are in our Unity scene. Uh, we're just going to talk about the game objects here. So as you'll see, we have the meta camera rig prefab that comes as part of the meta SDK. And we also have the meta hands prefab in our scene. These objects are just positioned right now at origin. Um, and all the settings under them are just the default settings, but feel free to look around these classes and these components, these objects, if you want to dive deeper. Um, the other thing in our scene you'll notice is our three spheres. We have a fire sphere, a plasma sphere, and an ice sphere. These are just regular sphere objects. Um, now they do have colliders. Colliders are important because they interact with the interaction scripts to provide hand grab. Um, and they have our custom clone grab script, which is our custom interaction, which we'll be talking about uh, as the main focus of this tutorial. Uh, another thing you'll notice is that they have a prefab reference to this, to one of these, fireball projectile, ice ball, plasma ball projectile. Uh, these are just simple game objects uh, that have particle effects under them. And they'll just represent the explosions and uh, the states of the, of the spheres uh, in play mode. They also have this explode after detach script, which we're going to call from, we're going to notify from our uh, clone grab script uh, when when we detect a release Okay, um, another thing to note about these objects if you notice that their position is No more than 0.25 Unity units away from origin and their scale is at 0.1 So if we look at the camera rig we look around, we'll see that it's their position rather close to our camera rig. And we want that because uh, the meta SDK works under the assumption that the Unity units uh, translate to real world meters. Um, so if you could imagine one positioning something one meter away from the headset uh, in real life could be kind of just out of your reach. So uh, Positioning things that you will interact with with your hands. It's a good idea to keep it to keep it close and uh, and small um, If you when in doubt you could always look at the example scenes in the meta SDK So meta example scenes You could look at the positioning and the scaling of objects in these scenes um, As a reference if, if you're ever having trouble with positioning um We'll also provide some images that will go into a little bit more detail about uh, what's the optimal place to put content that you interact with with your hands for a particular medicine. All right, and with that, let's jump to the code for clone grab. So over here, we have our clone grab script. As you notice that it derives off of interaction. We could take a look at that class. So interaction is the base class for all the different interactions of the meta SDK to 
to utilize hands um, for grabbing and dragging, rotating, scaling, all that fun stuff gets derived from the interaction class. Now, if we go back into our project, if we look for interaction, you can see that there's a lot of interactions already that are already provided by the meta SDK, like turntable interaction, turntable swipe, two hand grab interaction, two hand grab rotate interaction, scale, etc., etc. So, what we'll be focusing on today is showing how to extend the interaction class and with a minimal amount of effort, create our own grab and release functionality uh, extended off of the uh, Meta SDK. Awesome. So here we are up top. Uh, we're, we have two exposed variables for our, the inspector. One is just a prefab uh, connection to know what we're going to be cloning. And the other is just a speed variable to know how fast we'll be sending something uh, down a vector. Then we're, we have these two uh, these two member variables here. One is to hold on to the hand feature during the, the different phases of the grab interaction. And the other is the held object, so the object that will instantiate uh, when the grab begins uh, from the prefab. Okay, so you'll see the script is rather small. Uh, and we're just overriding some methods here. So we'll start with engage. So when you override engage from the interaction uh, off of an interaction script, uh, engage will get called when a grab is initiated. So that's when your hand is inside the, collisions, the collision volume of the object and it is in a grabbing uh, position. So it's with your hand closed inside the, the collision volume of the object, engage will get called. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to store the hand feature of the grab. So we're going to grab the first grabbing hand, which is defined in our interaction. Then we're going to check, are we currently holding on to an object? Uh, if we're not, we're going to create that, that clone of that projectile that we want to make. Then we're going to set the position of the projectile to the position of the hand so that it or originates where, where the hand position is. And then we're going to get the rigid body off of the projectile and set its velocity to zero. This engage, uh, if you haven't guessed already, gets called when the grab is released. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going, when the grab is released, we're going to send the projectile along the vector. And so first we're going to check if our hand feature and our held objects are valid. If they're valid, we're going to calculate a vector from the camera's position to the hand feature's position. We're going to normalize that vector and multiply it by our speed variable. Then we're going to set that velocity of the rigid body of the projectile to that new vector. And lastly, we're going to send a message saying, hey, we detached, we released a grab to the held game object, to the projectile, so that uh, it can start its coroutines uh, to start its effects when it explodes and then uh, destroy itself and clean up afterwards. All right, and then we're going to set our held object reference to null, that way next time Engage gets called, will instantiate a new clone. Awesome. And so the last bit here is just manipulate. We override manipulate. Now manipulate will get called in between engage and disengage. And manipulate is while the hand is grabbed, while the object is grabbed and moved around, manipulate will get called. So again, we're going to check if our variables that we're tracking are valid, if they're valid, all we're going to do is set the projectile's position to the hand's position. All right, and that's pretty much our basic custom interaction script to for clone grab that we're using in this project. So you can find uh, clone grab.cs uh, on the tutorial page for this tutorial. 
uh, feel free to use it as a base for your own custom interactions um, and change it around to fit the need of your project. Uh, for any additional resources, please check out the Meta Dev Center. And that's it. I hope this tutorial has shown you the basics of how to extend the Meta SDK. Thanks for watching. Happy developing.